Hello everyone, and welcome to the Lovetsky Lab here at the University of Texas, El Paso. And this is where everything goes from the field to the gene. And this is where your samples get processed. My name is Dr. Philip Lovresky. I'm an associate professor here at the University of Texas, El Paso in the biological sciences department in the ecology, evolution, and biology section. The core objectives of the Duck DNA project that is this new collaborative between Ducks Unlimited, my lab here at the University of Texas, El Paso, are to really engage the hunter and make them go after this as a brand new citizen science project at scales that we've never tried or imagined before. Hunters are there harvesting their birds every single year and it's a great resource for us because what we do here is use genetics to understand the underlying and fundamental aspects of each of the birds out there. We're able to then look at certain patterns of genetics, right? So why are certain hybrids or why is hybridization a problem here but not there? What kind of habitat are certain species associated with or potentially weather patterns or, or other aspects. In the end, our ultimate goal is to gather data that'll allow us to ask unique questions that we're unable to uh, without them. The partnership between Ducks Unlimited and the University of Texas El Paso and myself here um, kind of came about through a lot of back and forth between Dr. Mike Brazier and his team with Ducks Unlimited and, and myself and thinking about ways that how do we move forward with some of the research aspects that were coming out of my lab? We started co going back and forth and thankfully to the partners at Dex Unlimited and the funders, we were able to make that dream a reality this year in our pilot season. This year, while we're gathering data, we wanna give back to the hunters to let them know a little bit more about their duck, but we're really also seeing the value of it here. How are we going to scale this up to make sure every hunter that wants to be part of it can. The DNA of ducks and its importance to waterfowl conservation is something that's becoming more value as our methods in sequencing technologies, our ability to gather that kind of data have really scaled up only, I would say, in the last five years. Before getting DNA from anything, took a, it was a big chore and it was hard to fathom how you could use that kind of data in management decisions because sometimes that data didn't really come until five or plus years later from the initial uh, collection. What we're able to do now is essentially gather data in almost real time. So that way data streams can then feed back into management decisions. And, and we've got lots of projects that showcase that now. We were able to get out on a few hunts between DU Nation and, and myself, and we were able to harvest a few of the few birds there. We had a great hunt. And the beauty is that we were able to actually get a Mexican duck uh, what looks like a Mexican duck mallard hybrid. And that's something that we're keenly interested in this pilot season for duck DNA. So we were able to do that, but what we're also going to be doing with all those other uh, species. So we got some Northern shovelers, uh, Northern pintail, American widgeon, green winged teal, gadwell. So we got all those birds. And what we're gonna do with those birds is start building some additional reference sets for those species. So people get a gadwell mallard, or a pintail mallard or something like that, some sort of hybrid, we'll have some additional reference sets that we can look at so that way we can determine, better determine, yes, that is truly a gadwell mallard hybrid and it's 50% gadwell and 50% mallard or whatever it turns out to be. And the mom was mallard and dad was gadwell or vice versa. And so we'll be able to figure that part out. Hello everyone and welcome to the Lovetsky Lab here at the University of Texas, El Paso. As you can see, we've traded in our camo for the white coat, and this is where everything goes from the field to the gene, and this is where your samples get processed. When your samples arrive here at the Lovetsky Lab, we put them into deep freeze into the minus 80 until they're ready for processing. If you remember, we got ourselves what appeared to be a Mexican duck Mallory duck hybrid, and so we are about to start the DNA extraction process. So let's come get the sample here. Here we are, the first ever sample, DD0486. Let's start the process. As we can see here, we've got our tongue and our buffer. So we're gonna take a little of that tongue out. We're gonna cut a tiny little piece of that and we're gonna start the DNA extraction process. Your tongue will be combined with a couple different buffers that basically break down all the muscles and fibers and 
allow that DNA to go into solution, which we then can go and get. And then we uh, vortex it and we place it at 56 degrees Celsius for overnight digestion. So now that we've added the buffers to your sample, we spin them down in the centrifuge and your DNA is contained in this spin column and we'll keep going with our process. Okay, and so now with that step finished, we have your DNA extracted. So once your DNA has been extracted, we run gel electrophoresis, and this is a way for us to check your DNA visually on a gel. Visualizing the DNA is an important first step to make sure we have sufficient and quality and quantity of the duct DNA, so that way all later steps we are confident in that they will work. Under this hood, we are preparing to amplify your DNA. And to do that, we need to make sure we're in a clean space. And so this hood allows us to make sure that there's no other DNA going into your tubes. Now that we've got all of the things necessary to amplify your duct's DNA, we move over here to use these machines. They're known as thermocyclers. They essentially allow us to amplify your duct's DNA so that way we can sequence it and tell you what you got we're gonna be able to gather enough data to look at uh, associations between the genetics, the habitat, locations of hybrid zones. If you're someone that's interested in, in shooting hybrids, potentially the maps that will come out from this where we're kind of showcase hotspots of hybridization or hotspots of pure wild mallards or, or black ducks or model ducks or whatever it is, that'll get, give you information like, hey, if I want to get a Mexican duck model duck hybrid, I might have to go hunting in this area. And I think that's just a little bit more information for folks out there to make kind of their decisions for their fall plans, but also information about what exactly is happening around the country and in our waterfowl populations. If you're a waterfowl hunter in the, at least this season in the lower 48 and you want to participate in duck DNA, go to www.duckdna.com. There's a whole bunch of spots where you can click apply now and go ahead and put your name in the hat. We hope to, to the future, to get everybody who wants to participate, participating. What I would say to everybody that didn't get to participate or and want to into the future, make sure you reach out to your Ducks Unlimited representative and make sure to let them know how excited you are about this opportunity. And of course, if you're out there and interested in funding it, you should contact your Ducks Unlimited representatives and, and go ahead and make those donations so that way we see this program go into the future. Coming to the crib. <laughs> <laughs> These thermocyclers, which are machines you used by. Okay, that sucked. <laughs> now that we've got all the. Yeah. <laughs> These are all the bloopers. Yeah. <laughs>